look at your Facebook feed for God's sake. I mean, is that all that there is anymore? It's all it is. It's it's arguing, fighting, complaining, whining about the dumbest shit on the face of the fucking earth. And my point to this, guys, is that when we cry about it, when we whine about it, we're just contributing to the problem, okay? And here at the MFCEO Project, the purpose of what we're doing is to solve problems, okay? And you guys need to start working towards being part of the solution. And what I'm getting at, guys, is we need more leaders. People are going to look up to you guys. They're going to naturally look up to you because they know that you're consuming and you're driving and you're pushing and you're trying to be better. And whether you realize it or not, you are viewed as a leader. Maybe not by everyone, maybe not on social media, but there are people that look at you as a leader and you have to start being a leader. And what I mean by that, guys, is bitching, crying, moaning, complaining, that doesn't do anything. Okay, how do we stop this epidemic? We need to start making a ripple in, in, in the waves of what is society. And how do we do that? We do that by starting with ourselves, okay? We do that by starting by setting the example. We do that by making sure that instead of us whining and crying about things like entitlement, making excuses, and the way we stop is by starting with ourselves and stop accepting excuses from ourselves. The decisions you make right now is up to you. You crying about something that happened to you when you was a kid. You ain't even no kid no more. You a grown man. Take full ownership. The stupid stuff you doing, your parents didn't make you play no video games. And what you crying about? So what your daddy wasn't there? Your mama ended up getting married. What you crying about? He went to work every day. He never beat you. He never abused you. Your mama did the best she knew how to do. What you crying about? You grew up in a house. What you crying about? Stop making excuses for ourselves. Stop our bitching. Stop our whining. Don't tolerate that kind of thing in your life. Cut those people out. Don't give them your attention, including the people closest to you. We have a problem in this world. We have a problem on social media, and I'm aware of it. I hate it just as much as you do. I hate seeing the excuses. I hate seeing the whining. I hate seeing the complaining. I hate seeing the entitlement, okay? But getting on the internet and bitching about it you're not doing anything positive to solve the problem. You was never sexually assaulted. What you crying about? Did somebody beat your butt because you did something you weren't supposed to do? What you crying about? Nobody just came home and started whipping you? Man up! We're gonna fix the problem. We gotta start with ourselves. And that means no more bitching, no more crying, no more complaining, no more fucking negativity from us. And it also means accepting no excuses from us, paying attention to details from us, taking personal pride in the details from us, and holding ourselves accountable to set the example of what we need other people to be. Everybody's good at sending a tweet about how the world should be and nobody's doing anything about it. And that, just, that is just very much human nature. I was just gonna ask if you think that's human nature or if you think that we've gotten soft as a culture. Yes, you know, I mean, of course we've gotten soft as a culture in the US uh, because the US has had an incredible 200 year run, right? Like this is just what happens, you know, so as a culture, you know, I can't speak for, you know, the people that live in the Amazon River and I can't speak for, you know, people that still live in Belarus, but the, the American uh, culture is soft and that's a great thing. That means there's been enormous amounts of prosperity, but let's not be naive. I mean, people literally complain when somebody gives them the wrong amount of like extra cream in a Starbucks $6 coffee. Like this, like we've gotten to a place where we complain, you know, the, out of all those lovely things you said, as I stood there getting ready to come, the part that, and I'm glad you pick up on this and not a lot of people have said it before, so thank you. My lack of interest in complaining is so high uh, and when I watch what people complain about, it, it breaks my heart because they completely lack perspective. And I, I genuinely believe my happiness and optimism comes from my perspective. Uh, even in political unrest times like right now, a lot of people are very bent out of shape, but the reality is, is that 
It's just never been better to be a human being. It's, that's just the truth, that's just data, that's, that's reality. And um, yeah, I mean, it's just a very fun time to be alive, so much going on. Uh, the internet is starting to hit maturity. Look what we're doing right now. This right now, right, would have cost millions of dollars in production and distribution to have the amount of people who watch this just 15 years ago. <laughs> like, like, you know, I, I just think it's very interesting times and uh, I was saying something to a friend the other day. I was like, could you imagine if you told a parent 15 years ago, hey parent, what you're gonna wanna do in 15 years, instead of buying a kid, your 16 year old, a car, you're gonna convince your 16 year old daughter to go into a stranger's car every single day. <laughs> you're, gonna, you're gonna pay for your 16 year old daughter to go into a stranger's car every single day and you will think that's normal and actually safer than buying that, purse, that kid a car. That's literally what we're living in now. High net worth individuals in America are preferring to give their kids unlimited Uber to buying a car because, because they don't want them drinking and driving, they don't trust their driving and, and literally they think it's safer for their 16, 17 year old to go into a stranger's car than to drive themselves. That's sacrilege 15 years ago. Online dating 20 years ago. The weirdest, nerdiest, you're thinking 300 pound white dude in the basement of a kid's car, now it's just completely standard. I mean if you, if you add in sliding into people's DM on Instagram, it's like 89% of relationships, right? So, you know, I, I think that we are, um, I think we're going through a huge transition because all of us, even thought leaders, uh, are grossly underestimating the internet itself and we're hitting scale, right? We now all are on at all times and this is now the beginning. I was, I was joking while I was working out this morning to DRock, I'm like, DRock, you're gonna get replaced by like a Pokemon ball. Like I'm gonna throw it up. <laughs> like people in 20 years are literally gonna throw something up and just gonna hover 360 and film everything they're doing. I mean like it's just an incredible time um, and I think the way people look at the world right now, because it's such an incredible time, is actually the quickest tell to who they are. If you think it sucks or it's bad, you have losing pessimistic DNA. And if you think it's awesome and phenomenal, you have optimistic winning DNA. And I believe that to be true. And so, that's where we're at. How do you deal with self-doubt? I love self-doubt. I think it's amazing if you keep it in check. So 20% of my time I actually spend in self-doubt asking like, what am I really worried about? What am I worried that I'm not gonna be able to pull off? I wanna look at that, I don't wanna pretend, I wanna really know, like where do I think I'm weak? And then I'm gonna look at that and I'm gonna say, okay, how can I address this through real tactical skills? The, the key thing to overcoming self-doubt is there's one thing you have to believe about yourself. And that thing is, in fact, lean closer, boys and girls. Lean closer, because this is the key to everything. You have to believe humans are the ultimate adaptation machine, that we are wired for learning, growing, improvement, that there is a process in our brains called myelination. It's brain plasticity. And by doing something repetitively, you will get better at it. That is the nature of being a human. That is how we've become the apex predator. Nature makes a decision of every creature it creates. Option one, pre-program everything. Think of a horse. It's born and it can run and jump immediately that day. Humans, on the other hand, are wired for adaptability not knowing what situation you're gonna be born into, being able to go anywhere and adapt, being able to learn any specialty and get good at that thing. You could go and become a pipe fitter, you could go and become a novelist. You can become anything you want. That's adaptability. Now, once you accept that all humans have the ability to adapt, you don't have to believe that you're special or different. You simply have to believe you are a human and you can adapt, awesome. Now, all the self-doubts about, I'm not good enough, just slap on the word yet. I'm not good enough yet. I suck at this thing right now, but I could get better. Once I decide to allocate my mental resources, my energy, my time, my effort to that thing, I can get good at that. That is the only thing I believe about myself, but I just believe to the core of my existence that that is what humans are designed to do. Now it becomes, how tenacious am I? Do you have the willingness to bend over backwards, to break yourself in half, to bleed for the thing that you wanna do? Can you fucking David Goggins it? Can you grind so hard 
that other people think you are literally out of your minds. And, and, are you ready? Because this is the f***ing secret. Pushing myself long past pain, boredom, all of that. Those are some of my most joyful moments because I've built that into my system. Once you do that, you will become truly unstoppable. So self-doubt will crumble in the face of that. 